All right, class, here goes the XL1A simulation training. As I told you today in class, we go in order to 1.13, and then it jumps to 14. So I'm going to do these one at a time. So starting at 1.1. So I start everything up. We see Excel, we see our rows and columns and our banner. It's telling us in A1 to type the Easy Pantry. So we click on A1. So we need the name um, box to go to A1. And we hit Enter. Now for 1.2. A2, we're going to type the third quarter sales for fruit spreads. And then we're going to use the name box to go to A4. We're going to type jams and enter. In A5, it wants us to see the autofill feature, so we type J, and we see jams auto-populates. Could be a time-saving thing, but we're going to finish typing jellies. And enter. And that's it for 1.02. Let's see what That's interesting. So for we're going to use autofill and some shortcuts. So in B3, we're going to type July. And then the formula bar right up here where we see July, it wants to say to check to enter. It keeps that as an active cell. Now we're going to use the fill handle like we did in class today, the rectangle that's filled in and use autofill to get us uh, August and September. Okay. On the one four. So we want to Resize column A so it's a little wider than spice chutney. It wants us to hover between the two columns. We get this black cross looking thing. And it wants us to suppose that there's just enough room for chutney. Just wants me to go further than that. Okay. So now it wants us to select range B3 through D3, which it already is. But if we had to, we could just click one and go to the right, holding down our left mouse to highlight it all. And we want to right click. And in our mini toolbar, like we had with Word, we want to hit center, and it centers in the cell. <coughs> Now one five, we're gonna enter some numbers. So in B four, it wants us to type six two three two five point one two. Now we're gonna hit tab to go to C four. It wants us now to select columns B through F. In our home ribbon in our cells section, it wants us to click the format. 
and then it wants us to go to column width and it wants us to type 13 so we're manually setting how big these columns are going to be and hit OK now it wants us in C4 to type 8651.28 and hit tab and 9930.10 and enter for the September value. And B5, we want to type 59875.00 and tab 82335.76. So that's it for that. Line number six, we're going to use the sum function. Sorry, we're not recording it today. The internet is very slow. Let me try again. So in B8, it wants us to type the formula that's here, and we'll see a few different ways to do this. B4 plus B5 plus B6 plus B7. Notice the equal sign before the formula, and that's how we start off any formula or function used in Excel. And it wants us to hit tab. In C8, we want to use the point and click method to enter a formula to add C4 through C8. So we double click it. Sorry, we wanted to press sum our function bar and we go up to all. Oh, I'm going to type it. Um, and we're going to double click it. And we want C4 through C7 and hit OK. And now we want to go to D8. It wants us to go to home and editing, which is here, and it wants us to click the sum button to add D4 through D7. So there's three different ways you can enter the sum data. So we're going to copy the formula using a fill handle now. It's pretty similar to what we did when we filled out the series. So we're going to go to E3, and we're going to type total, press enter. With E4 active, we want to use the auto sum to sum B4 through D4. 
So we have other functions here, but we will just hit the sum and hit enter. And now we're going to just copy this all the way down to E8. We're using our fill handle. So we grab the filled in box and we copy all the values down. We're going to go to F3 and type trim and enter. So that's 17. On to 1 8, we're going to use merge and enter to make two adjacent cells look like they're one. So we want to go, well, we're going to do many. So we want to select the range A1 through F1. And in alignment, we want to do merge and center, which is this one that looks like a firewall type thing. And we're going to do A2 through F2. And we're going to click merge and center again. It wants us to click A1 in the styles group under cell styles. We want to go to title, which is down in titles and heading. And we're going to do heading one to A2. So cell styles and heading one. So now it wants us to select B3 through F3. And then we're going to hold down the control key because we're going to do some formatting on adjacent cells. We want to do A4 through A8. And we want to go to cell styles and go to heading 4. On to 1.9, we're going to format financial numbers. So now we want to select B4 through E4 and B8 through E8. Same method, click and drag, hold the control and click and drag. We want to go to home in our number group and we want to use the accounting number format, which is the dollar sign. So we're going to do B5 through E7. And we're going to use comma. And we're going to do B8 through E8. And we're going to go to our cell styles. And we're going to click total under titles and heading. And now we've seen some formatting of non-adjacent cells. One ten changing the workbook theme using armpit. With our range highlighted, we want to go to page layout because we're going to change themes. Theme is all the way on the left of our ribbon. We click the more button and we go and find slice, which is in the first column to the row. Now we're being told to select column A. All we do is click the A here in our home tab in our cells group. We're going to click format. And we want to go auto fit column width and it made our column the exact space we needed for a spice chutney instead of dragging it before. We can also hover our across between the two columns and double click to do the same thing. On to 111, we're going to insert our first chart. So to insert a chart, we have to have a range to do that. So we're going to go A3 through D7. And we're going to go 
go to insert and charts is right in the middle we're going to do recommended chart and we're going to use the first cluster and column chart and there's our first chart on to 112 chart tools to apply some styles these chart tools are so we we want to change the chart to our title. So in the chart, click anywhere in the text. I like to highlight it; it's easier. And then third quarter sales for fruit. Spreads and enter. Bring out tight to them. Oh, it wants me to click outside when I'm done. Sorry. Click outside the chart border, outside the chart title right here. To the right of the chart, we want our chart styles button, which is in the middle. We want to drag our vertical scroll bar down. We want the six style style set. So style six. Above the style gallery, click color. And we want to select colorful, the third row of colors. One, two, three. We want to position the chart so the left corner of the chart aligns with the upper left of A10. So we can click into the chart area and start pulling it. And it wants it to position the chart so the upper left corner of the chart lines with the upper left corner of A10. So right around there. And we're good with 112. 113, we're going to put spark lines, which are cool. They show trends within a set of stuff. So we're going to put trend lines, uh, spark lines in column F. So we want to highlight B4 through D7. And on insert, we want to go to spark lines, which are not in my view. Spark line. Sorry, I was looking for something different. My bad. So we want to click line. And when we do so, we have to tell it where to put it. So we're going to click F4 through F7 and then hit OK. And there we see our trend lines. And we like we've seen with objects and the other two applications we've done, we have a spark line menu now. And we want to go to the show group. And we want to put markers. We want to go to the style group. We want the first row, third style. And now we put some spark lines in. 114 is a footer, which I've never really used. 
Well, I don't really know why the rest does here, but we'll go with it. Very simple creating a footer, centering a worksheet, and changing page orientation. So we want to go to page layout. And under page setup group, we want to click margins. So we want to go all the way down to custom margins. So on our margins tab, which is the default, under center on page, we want to click horizontally. And we want to click header and footer. And then in the center of the dialog box, click, click custom footer, which we're going to do right here. In the left section on the row of buttons, click insert file name, which if you scroll through, you can see which one it is. It's going to be one that looks like an Excel sheet. And then we're going to click OK and OK again. Now, the view we're looking at is portrait. It's the default. It's default for all applications except PowerPoint. So we want to change it. So we're going to click orientation and then landscape. That will make it a lot easier for, uh, easier for us to print at the end of this assignment. So we want 15. So we want to go to the backstage view and click File. I'm going to click Info. In the lower right corner, we're going to go Show All Properties, which is right here. And then for Tags, we want to put Fruit for Sale. And hit Enter. Now we want to print, so we just want to go to Print. And we see our Print Preview. So now on to 116, where we print a section of a worksheet, selection, I should say. So we want to select A2 through F5. And then we go to our backstage view. We're only going to print these few selections. So we're going to go print. Then where it says print active sheets, if we click drop down, we hit print selection, and we go OK. And our last one, displaying printing and hiding formulas. On the formulas tab in the formula order group, click show formulas. So we go to our formulas tab in the formula order group, we click show, for, uh, show formulas. Point to the column A heading and then drag to the right to select columns A through F. Point to the column heading boundary between any of the two of these, and we're going to double click when we have the cross between them. And now we've auto fit everything and showed our formulas. It's going to tell us to go to page layout now to scale our page. And the scale the fit group is right towards the middle of our screen. We want to click width. And we want one page, and everything's going to be on one page. 